Welcome back to West Ham Unofficial. I hope you are. Oh, well, it's the big one. It's the big derby. It's England versus Scotland preview. Um, I hope you are. Oh, well, and today I've pulled some guests in. Firstly, I've got Josh. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. And we are joined by Sean as well. Sean, how are you? Good evening. Not too bad, buddy. Hope you're well. Good, good. So without further ado, we will get started there. Josh, I'll come straight to you. You feeling confident for this? You're wearing the England shirt. I'm wearing an England shirt. Are you feeling confident to get one over those? Well, I, I, I hope so, but I'm not sure. I think Croatia, it was it was a bit of a... I thought we had a good start. The Foden chance, um, Phillips had a shot from range as well. Um, but then I thought it's the game sort of died down a bit. Second half, we were just passing it around the back, sort of just boring England. And then we just went up the uh, went up the other end and got a, got the goal. And that was it, really. There, were, there wasn't much going on in the second half. So I, don't, I wasn't really impressed with the first game, but it, we won, so it doesn't matter. But I think, um, I don't know, Sterling, I thought he got, he got the goal in the last game. He was all right, but I still... Didn't think he was absolutely amazing, but I still think he'll stick with him because he scored. I don't think he'll change the team. Um, I go a completely different team to what Southgate goes with, but I don't think he'll change the team. But yeah, hopefully, I think we might be able to win. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, um, Sean, your thoughts on the one nil win over Croatia, and then we'll come to you about if you're confident or not. Very similar. Well, it's just said really, but um, I thought before kickoff because. Because the nature of our route to the hopefully to the final, if we finish runners up, we get could get an easier route. So I thought before kickoff, Southgate would have took a draw, and like was just said previous, the game started. We were quite good in the start, and it, it was almost noticeable. We took our foot off the pedal a little bit, yeah, and it became quite a sort of a sedate game. Not a lot really happened. It looked like a game where both teams were probably happy with a draw. If either team won it, they would have took the win, obviously. But I don't, I don't think Croatia are a very good team. It was much like a lot of the other um, opening games I've seen in the last week. Not, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say anyone's shone. So it's, we did enough, didn't we? Yeah. So, so going forward against Scotland, I, I am confident we'll beat them. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a strange one. So I've heard a lot of people say he'll stick with the team. He might do, but I don't understand Southgate very often. And if he doesn't mix it up a lot, that would surprise me because he's he put a right back at left back. So I understand that. He, Trippier's played there quite a few times for England, two or three times, I think, when he hasn't had a left back. Got, so we, Luke Shaw's only just come in. So he stuck with him, loyalty. But I'll be very shocked with all the fullbacks we've got on the squad if he doesn't put a proper left back in. I think. What well, we've got three right backs, haven't we? And I think Scotland's Walker's obviously very good. I think he had, didn't have one of his best games, but um, Scotland's dangerous down the left. But they, I think um, Tierney's trained today, they've already yeah. got Robertson, that's two of the best left backs in the Premier League. So it wouldn't surprise me if they bring Reese James in, who's probably our best defensive right back we've got. And other than that, if, if you look at the subs from the first game, he took off Kane on the hour, he took off. Foden is probably our most attacking the run, runner with the ball, and he took off Sterling. Now I think he only took them off to protect them for another day when we need, and it's more important. So I'll be surprised if he doesn't make two, two or three changes. Mm, yeah, yeah, I agree. I look at it and think we are in the, pretty much the same position that we were in 2018 with the World Cup going into the last game of the group, thinking you know if we beat Belgium, here, we're going to have to play a really good side in the next round, and we were almost like. Mm -hmm. We lost it, get in in a way that we kind of had the easy route through, and I think we could be looking at the same kind of same kind of situation. But I think I think we I think we will we will win this group. But Scotland, you know, I've said at the start we shouldn't underestimate any of these sides in in the uh, uh, in the group because I mean they've all got a lot of talent, and we know what Scotland can do against England. But you know, um, let's go into a few predicted 11s. And so this is um, our predicted 11s because we just it's, it's just impossible to. Uh, absolutely impossible to uh you know pick what Southgate will do because he could do absolutely anything but Josh we're going to start with your team then I'm going to bring I'm going I'm going to bring it up on screen and then you're going to talk us through it then so 
I don't think it'll go with all of this. This is far too attacking for Southgate. <laughs> this is just my um, start on 11. I do personally think that he'll probably play stick with Phillips because he did have a good game. But this is my start on 11. So I've went with, it's really attacking um, with Foden, Mount, Grealish, Sterling and Kane all on the pitch. And to be fair, I didn't, I didn't really um, see much... Um, I, I wasn't really too impressed with Rice against Croatia. I, I, I didn't think he played bad, but he just wasn't as good as Phillips. But I do think that Rice is definitely the better player um, normally. And um, I, feel, I don't think he'll play Grealish, but I've, I've got to go with him, haven't I? And I don't understand why he played Sterling, who's barely played second half of the season, apart from the Champions League final. And he leaves Grealish out, who he played in all the friendlies and was our best player, probably. So I don't, I didn't get it, but Sterling scored anyway, so I can't really say much. But yeah, you've got to go with Kane up front, obviously. I'm sticking with Mings and Stones at the back, whether Maguire's fit or not. But I don't think Maguire's fit anyway because I know Mings played really well on um, Sunday. Um, I thought he had one of his better games. Uh, didn't make any mistakes. Didn't put a foot wrong. Uh, Trippier, I've, I have took him out of the team because he's just not left footed is he has to keep cutting back every time he goes forward onto his right um because he's not ne- he's not left footed. I thought it was stupid why Southgate put him left back in the first place. Um so I went with Luke Shaw because he's had a brilliant season. Um and I think I've had to stick with Rice haven't I just because he's just you can't have no defensive midfielders can you? You've got to and 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 but and but and because you're on a West Ham YouTube channel, that's why as well. <laughs> yeah, and uh, people might be wondering why I didn't put Bellingham in. I did think he, when he's come on for England lately and played for England lately, that, lately that he's been all right. But I just thought I've I've got to go with Rice, Foden, and the Mounts. They've just been too too much better than them. But in the future, I think Bellingham is gonna be in my team. Yeah, so let's have a look at um, Josh's team. So Pickford and Girl back for Luke Shaw, Mings, Stones and Kyle Walker. Midfield three of Royce, Mount and Foden, Grealish, Kane and Sterling. So, Sean, we'll come on to your team then. You're going to talk us through it. There you go. There you are. Um, I think one of the, one of the problems Southgate has got, I sort of think he knows his best 11. So I think he might, this is just a bunch, I think he might use these three group games He's got to go into a confident, even with one eye on the knockout stage. So he can use these three games as giving a lot of players a go, an hour here, half an hour here. And by the time the end of the group stage, hopefully he's worked it out. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I do think he has to change both the fullbacks. I think his staff taken so many fullbacks if he's not. I think a nat- natural, nat- natural left footer on the left. I think Chilwell, he's used more in qualifying than Shaw, who's like a late entry. He's a very loyal coach, don't forget, as well. Like um, Josh just said about Sterling. Sterling's been brilliant for Southgate. That's why he's that's why he's got the shirt. Um, I'm a big James um, fan, as you know, when I picked my Premier League team of the season. I also think he's the best defensive right back we have. And Scotland, if they're going to cause damage, it will be on their left, coming down our against the right side of our defence. So I'll go with that. Um if you've got a partnership and we haven't got the best centre backs with or without Maguire really, but they didn't they didn't really put a foot wrong against some um, Croatia, so you'd be daft to change them. I think Ming I think Maguire's training now, so he's probably Mings is probably needs to keep playing brilliant to keep Maguire out. You you sort of sense if he puts makes one or two mistakes, Maguire will probably be in for the last group game. Yeah. Um the last thing I'd want is for Maguire to not play in it must be coming up to two months if he hasn't played soon. You don't want his first game being a knockout game versus Portugal here, let's be honest. No. You'd, you'd want him in by the last group game. In midfield, um, again, I think Royce never puts a foot wrong. Phillips is man of the match. But if we, we're going to have an issue to work on as this tournament goes on, it could be how negative that area of the pitch is. If you watched, because Rice doesn't do anything exceptional with the ball, does he really? He's not, he doesn't get massively up the pitch. Do you know what I mean? Like I was watching France last night. It's like Kante. I know he's probably the best in the world in that position. He does, he does what Rice and Phillips do together. 
Do you know what I mean? He'll protect. And then next thing you know, he's on the edge of the box winning the ball. Do you know what I mean? So, True, yeah. So it's, I know I know we can't have a Kante because there's no one else like him. So we might have to tweak it in there. But then again, Phillips and Mike, um, Southgate probably not off the bottle and we just have to see what happens there. But um, Bellingham, yeah, I don't want to dismiss Scotland, but it's our weak, It's the weakest group game we've got. Southgate yeah. is very loyal to him. He likes him. He's, he gave, I think he's the youngest player in the Euros history. So it, it sounds harsh to drop Phillips here and I'm, pro I'm probably miles off of it. But, but he burns a lot of energy. He's a tiger around the pitch and he's, he is a little terrier. So rest him. We, we, it's not all about Scotland. We get him out the team, get him to put his feet up, bring him on for half an hour against the Czechs. Do you know what I mean? Use these three games as almost prep the team for when it matters. Okay, we beat Croatia. They're meant to be the toughest game. They were poor. Scotland, yeah. we've got to be going to them, being confident. So rest a couple of players that are playing well. Mount, I would, he's a bit undroppable for me because he never gets injured. He never gets a knock. He's Energy everywhere. He, does, he unlike Phillips, you, you're not relying on him to put a foot in because Phillips gives away a lot of fouls. So yeah, I'd go with that. Um, Kane picks himself. He had a quiet game against Croatia, but on the other hand, was he told to have a quiet game? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like he sort of in the World Cup, in the Euro warm-up game, maybe had a friendly game. It might be Austria. Didn't do a lot on that either. I think Southgate might be aware that Tottenham always rushing back from injury. So. I think he had missed two weeks about March, rushed back for the League Cup final. Then he's played every single game. Do you know what I mean? Southgate yeah. might be brain, just he didn't need to do a lot. He had a couple of good, nice layoffs taken off. Um, back to the loyalty. He's been loyal to Rashford. Rashford is not everyone's cup of tea. And he, you could flip a coin if you pick him or Sterling, I think. I think you really could. They're both wasteful. They're both probably a bit direct and running the trouble but they can both pop up and get a goal. Um, on the left, the, the, the position I'm not sure about is Foden. I've gone with him again. I'm sort of contradicting myself a little bit when I said about the Phillips, I like rest him up. I think he took Foden off on about the hour mark as well. He'd done enough. You, you know he's brilliant. He's only young. He, he played loads of games towards the end of the season. He didn't play loads throughout the season. Like I said, I'm contradicting myself because really I should have put Grealish there instead of Foden. If you're going to play Grealish, it's going to be to this against Scotland. Yeah. But I just wonder, the Scots are going to be up for it. They're not, they haven't got a bundle of talent. Will they be just be looking to kick him? I, is it sort of game passion-wise Grealish plays? I don't know. I think I'd probably bring Grealish in for the Czech game, I think. But we could see any other surprise if Sancho gets to start. I think he could be wrong. But I think we might see two, three, four changes. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, and my 11 then to finish off then, Pickford and goal, about four of Chilwell, Ming, Stones and Trippier, Phillips, Rice and Bellingham in the middle, Grealish, Kane and Foden up front. I think Chilwell, I really like him and I, and I think he deserves a chance. Mings and Stones, I think, picks themselves, so does Pickford with Harry Maguire still out. Trippier, I thought, I thought, it, I thought, he, I thought he did all right on the left-hand side, so I'd like to see him have a go on the right, I think that could happen. Phillips, I think... I mean, I mean, I can see why you'd rest him, but I think um, that would be really, really harsh to to rest him. I think, I think, um, I think he'll play. Rice picks himself. Bellingham, uh, Bellingham as well. Um, I think deserves a chance, and this is the game for it. The same with Grealish. I think this is the game for him to start. Kane picks himself, and I was really, really impressed with Foden um, um, on uh, on the other. On the other night, so uh, let's let's move on then. So, Josh, I'm going to come to you then. One player, one player you you are fearing from that Scotland uh, side or eleven or whoever you want. Well, I think I know normally Scotland because they have two of the best left backs in the Premier League with Tierney and Robertson. I'm pretty sure that Tierney normally plays just in front of Robertson, but I'm not sure if he's fit. So. I'm probably going to, it's out of two, probably John McGinn or Andy Robertson. And I'm probably going to go with, we do have players like Lyndon Dykes, Che Adams going forward as well. But Che Adams didn't even start against Czech Republic, I don't think. And Dykes was quite poor. I didn't watch mm. the match, obviously, because I was in school, but I watched the highlights when I came back. Um, and I, don't, I, I didn't really 
rate Dykes in that game. So I think I'm probably going to go with John McGinn because not maybe it's just because I'm a Villa fan, but um, <laughs> but no, no, his work rate is just unbelievable. He's up and down all game, doesn't stop. And I think since his injury back in December 2019, I think it was, he, I, I don't think he's been the same player, but he's still as important as ever to this Villa side because without the legs in the midfield, we, we would have lost a lot more games than we did do this season. So, And I think he can hit them. We, um, he scored quite a few goals for Villa from outside the box. Um, so if he gets the ball on the edge of the box, I'd be worried. Um, and he can pick a pass as well. He's got skill, got strength. Um, so I think we need to watch out for him again. But if someone like Adams plays, or well, don't rate. But I think for Scotland, he's going to be good um, if he gets the ball. I think he's had a bit of a bet, much better season for Southampton than last se- compared to last season. He's done better for them. So, and Robertson, he is he's one of the best crosses of the ball in the world. So, I reckon probably them three. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Sean, the ones to choose from. I mean, the notable ones you've got, you've got Tierney, Robertson, McTominay, McGinn. Um, quick file one of them then, Sean. Who is your the player you fear from Scotland? Um, firstly, McGinn, I agree, very good player. He, um, towards the end of the season, Villa played Tottenham. Villa beat Tottenham at our stadium and McGinn was the best footballer on the field. So, um, the thing is, I think we've got all these got the best two left-backs in the league. They play both of them out of position. You've got, we've got to remember that. They, they're more than likely going to play a 3-5-2. One of them, probably Robertson, will play in centre midfield on the left of a three. So, it's tricky because they've, they've got, say, five good good Premier League players, but they've got to accommodate six average players. Do you know what I mean? Because for that reason, they've got to tweak the formation. Next thing, you've got Tierney, who's not not fully fit, and Robertson in midfield. Who would I pick one? I'm going to be negative and say Che Adams, because you can... Scotland, if they're going to score, it's going to be from a set piece, probably. They're going to lump it up. He's going to be told to be ugly. Bully Stones... So yeah, he's he's not he's not a bad striker. Saints often bring him off the bench. So yeah, if they're going to score, it's going to be from a big ugly striker. So I'll go Che Adam. Yeah. The final question then. You all know what's coming. It's the prediction, and I've learned as the season's gone on with all of these previews, I'm going to do mine first because someone always nicks my prediction. Now this is when I say this. Now I've got to think of a think of a prediction. Now I think um, I think this won't be easy. I think it will be another ugly game. Um, I think Scotland will frustrate us, but I think I think if we can get an early goal, I think this could be hideous for Scotland. Um, and I thought that exactly the same. If that Phil Foden goal would have went in, I thought we would have not knocked a, knocked a few more past them easy. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm between. I don't think they'll score. I don't. So I think three nil's a bit harsh. So I'm gonna go two nil. <laughs> two nil to uh to the mighty three lions. And Josh, to you, what's your prediction? And you and it can't be two nil now. Not two nil to England. No, I think. It's going to be tough, but some England fans might not want us to win because, as um, you've both mentioned us mentioned before, if we top this group, we have to play second from um, the group of death, which has Germany, France and Portugal in, and Hungary, Hungary aren't going to get through. So um, we'll have to play one of them. So some England fans would rather come second and first, but... I'm, I'm not sure, you've just got to go for the win, haven't you, no matter what game you're playing. So, we've got to play them at some point, them big teams. So, I just want to win. So, I'm going to go 2-1 to England because I do think that Scotland are going to score because I feel like someone like Stones or Phillips will give away a stupid free kick in a dangerous area. So, I think they are going to score from set pieces and they're going to get a lot of corners. So, I, I'm probably going to say... Liam Cooper at the back is going to head it, head one in for them. And for us, it's probably going to be, I'm going to say Kane is going to get back to um, his best and score. And I'm probably going to go Mings from the corner. Couple of things to pick up on that. I hope Kane scores because he's he's not only in my fantasy team, he's in my fantasy team captain. So so we so we yeah. better start do something. Well. He he. 
you better start doing something as well. So to be honest, if if we had that tactic of, you know, we don't want to win this group, to be fair, I'd rather, if we had to win two, I'd rather we lose to the Czech Republic, not Scotland, because you could, could you, could you, could you imagine all the Scotland fans? But anyway, um, Sean, over to you then, your prediction. You went, oh, when I said 3 0, I didn't go with 3 0. <laughs> So you so you can't go two one, you can't go yeah. two nil. You've got a toughest toughest job here. Uh, what's your prediction? Uh, f- firstly, I think all that um, the questions about finishing first or second in the group. Personally, I think that failed now. I think because we beat Croatia, we will just think right, positive. Let's go for it now. So I I think we'll top the group on nine points. I don't think there's going to be any well, what should we do nonsense. Um, I'm with you a bit, Jake. I think. The Scots need something from this game, or they're out. Basically, we if we if we beat them by enough, we can more or less knock them out on Friday night, and I think that's what we'll do. Basically, I think they will probably set up negative. Like I said, three five two. Like anyone, we've got Kane. You'll notice every centre back just as soon as Kane gets the ball, they'll try and smother him. So you might see Kane have quite twenty minutes, but as long as the runners around him be it Grealish, Sterling, Rashford, Foden, Sancho, as long as they're feeding off him, that is the job being done. I So I think they will frustrate us for a little bit because they've got to keep it tight. They, they come out and try to be expansive in open football, we're going to take them to pieces. So they will keep it tight and I think we'll break them down, go 1-0 up. I can see us getting a penalty. I don't. I just got a feeling if, if Kane's, with Kane's goal comes from a penalty spot, I just... It's the sort of game where you can see a penalty coming. Do you know what I mean? They might frustrate us for half an hour, then just Sterling might turn one and he brings them down. Sort of. So I think we'll frustrate us for 20, 30 minutes. We'll get a goal. Then second half, because they need something, they have to open up. And I think as soon as they open up, whether we make subs or the players on the pitch, I think we'll score more. I think why I made that face at 3-0, because I think it will be 3-0. <laughs> would there it, we would go. It, it wouldn't surprise me. I nearly went four. I think we'll we'll score, and they will they will have to open up, and then it'd be we could punish them and then knock them out. I agree. I completely agree. Anyway, that is the preview done. Um, firstly, Josh, thanks very much for coming on. No problem. <laughs> thank you very much and to you Sean as well thank you very much but um but before we do go um but before we do go I'm at a concert Friday night so I won't be able to watch it on the night I will watch it don't worry so so there, so there will be a review um on Friday night Pete shall be on the legend himself will do his review sometimes Saturday there'll be all different content throughout the day for it so make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the like button hit the hit the notification bell as well you know what to do and yeah Come on, England. See, this is what I do on the videos. Where it's just where, where, where it's just me. I go subscribe for more. Oh, I've mucked this up already. So for more England and Euros content, I completely mucked that up. Anyway, <laughs> um, there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you very, very soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers.